Sovereign distribution of labor creates divine need. Now, this is what creates the place of man. Remember Genesis chapter 2 verse 7 says, Then the Lord God formed the man of the dust from the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life and the man became a living person. And then in verse 15 in Genesis chapter 2, the same chapter, it says, Then the Lord God took the man and put him in the garden of Eden to cultivate it and tend it. Remember what the problem was, that God didn't have a man to cultivate the ground. Then what did he do? He then, the Bible then says, he then took the man and put him in the garden of Eden to what? To cultivate it and tend it. And so what happened here is that this this very short passage, well, Genesis chapter 2, verses 1 through 15, helps to uh, help us, helps to help us understand the concept of the synergy between God's needs, divine need, and human purpose. God's need in this very specific instance was that he needed a man to cultivate the ground. Or in fact, he needed somebody, something. Or in fact, the problem simply was that the ground was not cultivated. He needed somebody to cultivate the ground. What did he do? He then created a creature called Adam, called man. And then he took that man and put him in a garden. And his assignment was to cultivate it and tend it. What does that mean? That his need and the reason for the man's existence were coinciding. In fact, they were one. The man's reason for existence was to solve that divine need, was to fulfill that divine need. That the purpose of man's existence is defined in fulfilling a divine need. Your purpose is the divine need you were created to fulfill. The same way here, God's need was that there was an uncultivated ground on the earth and he needed a man to cultivate the ground. Why does he need a man to cultivate the ground? Because the Bible says the heavens are the Lord's, but the earth he has given to men. And so there are certain things in the earth that he cannot do apart from man. And so when he sees an uncultivated ground, you would think he'll just snap his fingers and make it cultivate. Ah, it doesn't work like that. Because it doesn't work like that, not because I'm saying it doesn't work like that, but because he's made it so it doesn't work like that. The reason why he won't just snap his fingers and have a cultivated ground is because he's given the responsibility of what happens in the earth as far as its development and its expansion to man. And so that responsibility is given to man. Therefore, he needs a man to do certain things as it pertains to the earth. And so what happens is that that divine need is created. So when God sees that he has that need and he cannot impose himself and bring the solution by his own authority or through his own power, he has to create a man who becomes the solution to that need. So his problem is that he has an uncultivated ground. He then creates a man whose assignment is to cultivate the ground. So God is sovereign. He gives the earth to man, relinquishes some responsibility to man. That creates, it, that creates divine need. Why does that create divine need? Because once God says, I'm not going to do everything, he then needs somebody to do some things. If God now says, I'm not going to do everything in the earth, by definition, it means that someone else has to do other things. Then it creates a need for those other people to do those very things. What Then from there, what happens is that once he understands the things that he needs to happen but cannot make happen apart from man, a man has to be created to fulfill that divine need. Let me take that again. God is sovereign. He creates the earth. He's all-powerful but does not allow himself to do everything. And so because he does not allow himself to do everything, he needs other creatures to do certain things. And then in the context of the earth, he has to then create a creature called man who will be able to do the things in the earth that he cannot do. Because of this, a divine necessity is created because of the fact that he cannot do everything. Once you cannot do everything, you need somebody to do that thing for you. One proverb I, I know very well is that you will pay for what you cannot do yourself. Right? If you cannot mow your own lawn, you'll pay for someone else to do it. Because if you're not able to do something, you have to hire somebody or get somebody else to do that thing you can't do. Now, in this particular instance, it's not that God can't do it, it's that God will not do it. But the same need is created. So because, in an instance, you may be able to mow the lawn, but not have time. So you can, but you may not be able to. Or you may be able to, as far as your ability, you have the competence to do so, you have the skill to do so. You can actually physically mow the lawn, but you may not have the time. It may not be in your best interest, right? So 
you can have the ability to do something, but for whatever reason, you may not still be able to do it for whatever other reason, right? So you would have to get someone else to do it. It creates, anytime you cannot do something, it creates a need for the person that can do that thing. So because God cannot do everything in the earth, it creates a need for him to need somebody. It creates, um, do you understand what I'm saying? When God cannot do everything in the earth by necessity, he then needs somebody to do that thing. That person he needs is a man. And that man, his assignment is to be the solution to that problem that God has. So the purpose of man's existence is defined in fulfilling a divine need. Your purpose is the divine need you were created to fulfill. Your purpose is the divine need you were created to fulfill. Man is the solution to divine need because man is able to prosecute the affairs of God in the earth. And God is the producer of the purpose of the man's life. God